Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today we're back into the big one, Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our Let's Play against the devilish Mr. Lodrick, and it is now March 19th, 1942. It is the setup phase. Uh, we're going to go around and check things out. Now, his carrier task force was just off Nomaya this time, and we got a couple of hits on a carrier. Uh, the first big cheer went up on in Allied uh, Command uh, in this game. Uh, there's been other good things that have happened, but of course, into March at this point, uh, most of it has been bad. <laughs> and Lodrick's also a very skilled player, so maybe a little more bad than usual. But uh, we did get a couple of hits on a carrier. We're letting him know, hey, you just can't go uh, sally by Nomaya, Suva, these places. We now have assets that could potentially hurt you, and so hopefully that'll scare him. I, I have a feeling it won't. Uh, he is a very aggressive player, which has made for a very uh, fun game so far. So anyway, as usual with the setup phase, we're going to go look at the statistics. I also thought just while we're here, why don't we look around and just see what I have going on in and around Pearl Harbor. And we've got uh, Destroyer, I would imagine. Yes, the Destroyer of the Case is doing anti-sub out here. Then I have another Destroyer doing anti-sub here just to the south of the islands. Uh, we have uh, battle. Oh, I wanted to point this out. The War Spite, which is a British battleship, uh, ends up over here in Pearl Harbor. I'm sending that back and around to Cape Town. Now, it has got a long ways to go, right? It has to go through the Panama Canal. Uh, up to the east coast to the U.S., and then back around all the way to Cape Town. Uh, but I did want to get that with the Brits. Uh, they, they, These guys didn't like hanging out with the Yanks, and they said, get us out of here. So I'm going to send uh, three destroyers along with that. Just, you know, can't afford to lose a battleship for these kind of silly purposes. Uh, but I did want to get it over to Cape Town because we need another battleship, uh, British battleship over there um, as we build up our British uh, Indian Ocean fleet. So I am sending that back over. So that's what that is. Then I think we have a piece see here yeah the pc taney is running some anti-sub we have the pc tigers returning to replenish but is also running asw up here we have other asw ships going here this i think is continuous supply uh out to either johnston or midway it is coming into port this cargo task force here uh but just want to kind of show you what we have here and then also here at pearl harbor if we go and look at our ships and go by type. The Yorktown and the Enterprise sit here, you know, in good repair, just hanging out. Uh, but ships under repair. We've now got the Lexington and the Saratoga back refitting. And they've got that big anti-aircraft on it now as they refit here in March. So these two, the Lexington and the Saratoga, are eligible to refit. And they add a, like I said, just a ton of anti-aircraft uh, March 1st. And then if we go back to, whoops, well, that's fine. Uh, if we go back to uh, our active ships, the Yorktown and the Enterprise, they can upgrade on April 1st. So we'll do that. And then once that's done, we can really start thinking about moving our carriers out of Pearl Harbor. Now, we got to pick our spots, right? Uh, because even if he has his two carrier task forces split apart, he still has 12 or 13 carriers. I can't remember which. We've got four, but if, I mean, even if he splits them apart, he's got six in one, probably six in the other. Not to mention he's got carrier escorts that can also carry planes and light carriers that can carry planes. So he certainly would outgun us. So we'll have to, you know, pick our spots, try to lay a trap for him a little bit. You can see we've got a lot of battleships here. That's part of the reason I'm sending the War Spite over to be with uh, their British compatriots. Patriots, uh, lots of cruisers, and a lot of these are eligible for upgrades on 442. And when they do that, their anti aircraft will also just shoot way higher. I think we've got one or two that have already gotten refit. I can't, it would tell us right up here. So when something refits, it tells you right up there. Uh, let's go to ships under repair, uh, and you can see that. See this? Lexington class 3. 1942 that tells you it upgraded then um let's go look at is there a cruiser in here no there's not 
I thought we probably, well, we've got one cruiser. I think it's the St. Louis uh, class or the St. Louis itself, but is, oh, that's a light cruiser. Okay, well, the St. Louis has got a lot of anti-aircraft for a starting out non-refitted light cruiser, uh, but we'll have to see those cruisers when they pop in there. What's the, like the Chester? Well, that's not till 1042. That's not going to do us a whole lot of good. Uh, well, it will eventually, but like the New Orleans can upgrade April 1st as well. It's already at a 530. That may push it up close to 1,000. So you get a lot more anti-aircraft when uh, those things upgrade. Uh, we'll be looking forward to that. Okay, let's jump into the stats, see what's going on. Uh, last turn, we ran 5707 on the sorties. The Japanese ran 7326. Air-to-air -air losses. Uh, we took 18, he took zero. Well, as I said at the time, uh, would we pay, you know, 18 air to air losses for two hits on a carrier that maybe or may, may or may not make it back to port? Probably will, but may not. May be out of commission for a long time, even if it does. Uh, probably, probably, right? I mean, you know, these aircraft are replaceable. They're, I think they're probably worth one point apiece. So 18 to zero, destroyed on the field, zero to zero. Destroyed by flak, zero to zero. He took four operational losses to R1. Okay, so 19 to four in the air at the time. Political points, 135. We did buy out a regiment. I can't remember which one I bought out. Uh, I should have probably put that on the last video, but I just can't remember off the top of my head. It's over in Los Angeles. We'll check it out. Uh, I think, I don't think I have it on the transports yet. I had to get a few transports over there. Uh, so we'll go look. Uh, Japanese score 17,060. Allied score 7,706. Four to one is what you're looking to avoid. Okay. Allied bases controlled. You can see now it's 436 to 402. So he will certainly pass us for the number of bases controlled uh, here in the near future. Uh, air, Allied aircraft points lost 1190 to 716. Army points lost, oof, 7445 to 140. We have had 420 ships sunk. We The Japanese have had eight that we know about. Ship sunk, last turn, nothing. That's what we like to see, although I would like to see a carrier on there, a Japanese carrier, that is. Uh, but if that does go down as it tries to limp back to Japan, uh, we probably won't even know about it for a while. So anyway, um, aircraft that are coming in. What do we got? What do we got? We've got uh, some A-29 Hudsons in one day. Then after that, we go for a very long time time i just want to make sure i've got them all up here i was like my gosh where are they all we go for a very long time where we don't really get very many aircraft we've got some training aircraft here into uh san diego uh the wellington's into aden uh calcutta okay uh canberra this is kind of interesting b25 c's coming in at canberra we'll take it uh, a bunch of sky trains coming in at aden they can go up to lado and start trying to take supply down into China, uh, Catalina's, Singapore's fortresses. Not, not that impressive. The stuff we have coming in in the in the short term, anyway. Uh, so, boo. Not, not a big fan of that. Um, list top pilots. We haven't done that for a few turns. It's still our guy, C A C Stone. And uh, I think Stanley had a little information about him last time, or uh, I'd say last time, a few times ago. Uh, that's a real dude. That's a real dude. Uh, anyway. Uh, or it was, unfortunately, I'm, I'm sure he's passed. Uh, Hurricane 2B Trops, you know, look at that. Uh, they are your best aircraft. Uh, Warhawks, we've got a uh, Flying Tiger in here. You can see uh, Grover. No, it was Grover maybe that you were talking about, Stanley. I, gosh, I can't remember now. Uh, he's back at Trackhome to try to train up some pilots. Um, okay, there's that. Uh, ship availability. What do we have coming in? Let's do the old double sort and get back up to the top. And in one day, we got some AKs. We got a KV coming in at Victoria, of all places. Uh, we have a submarine, the drum, coming in at Pearl Harbor. Okay, nothing too exciting on here. Just a bunch of supplementary type uh, ships. You know, they all help, but 
you know, nothing great. We get another tanker at Balboa, some, you know, submarine uh, transport, some destroyers, a KVE. You know, nothing big, though. Nothing big. We don't get another carrier for quite some time. Let's just do this by carrier and see. I think we've got to double sort it back there and see when the next uh, would come in. 83 days, we get the Wasp in at Balboa, so that'll be a very pleasant day for us uh, when the Wasp comes in. We also get some uh, light carriers. Uh, the Brits get the Illustrious in 40 days. Let's see, get down here and see if we see any more 42s. Yeah, December you know, 15th, right before Christmas, we get a little Christmas present. We get some carrier escorts, the Sangamon, the Chenango, the Suwanee, uh, all coming at Balboa. Um, October, we get a couple more of those. So you can see we start really getting a lot of carrier escorts uh, and they can carry planes. You know, we got one into Tacoma there. So, you know, it looks like we get five or six here before the end of 1942, and we may very well need them to try to try to get some points back. Uh, ground reinforcement, I'm not even going to look at that this time. You know what I'm looking for, and uh, let's move on. A couple of things I want to do uh, before we just do our grand tour. What regiment did I buy out over here? Let's see, which one was it? West Coast, West Coast, West Coast, Attach 2. Pacific Fleet, I think it was this 160th Infantry Regiment. It must have been. It must have been. Because it's part of the 40th Division. Yeah, that is exactly the one I did. Uh, and that will go off to Australia. Because if we look at it, I'll do that again. Unit Organization of the 40th. Big part of that, you know, the 180th, 108th, and then part of this 160th, I've already started to get on the task force here. Uh, just a little bit of this left, right? We already have part of this at Rockhampton. So it's already, you know, moving. It's out at Rockhampton. And then, you know, we've got Los Angeles, but these are all getting on the task forces and we'll get those uh, over into Australia, all of it, to put together the 40th Division. I think I have them at, uh, well, I say I think, I know, I just looked at it, they're at Rockhampton. That's where, we're, where we'll put that entire American division back together. Let's then go over to the Philippines and check out our guys. And the Seagulls, these guys have been the most amazing squadron I've ever seen. Uh, now, their bombing accuracy is only 7%, but they have taken out, I don't know, at least five or six ships. Um, you know, car some cargo, you know, it's not, it's not like we've taken out some of the big stuff. We've taken out a few cargo ships. I do think we got a hit on a destroyer, maybe, um, and some sub chasers. I don't know. These guys are incredible. Let's check out the pilots and see why they're doing so good. Well, that's why. <laughs> no, I kid. Look at that. They're not even good at what they do, really. I mean, I've got them on what? Naval attack? I just flipped them over to this because I figured I was going to lose them anyway, right? So I've got them on naval attack. Um, wow, look how bad these pilots are from a naval bombing perspective. You know, I mean, even from experience, they're not very, they don't have much. Uh, their naval bombing is just almost, you know, as bad as you would send out here. And they have just ripped up some stuff. Good dice rolls. Well, pretty much every turn they've been naval attacking something. And so, you know, their bombing accuracy is only 7%, but it's paid off uh, certainly for a number of ships. Uh, you know, we I should transfer them out, but I'm going to let them keep going. Let's just, let's make uh, myths of them all. Uh, the famous seagulls of Cagayan. Uh, incredible, incredible. Okay, that's what's so great about this game. I mean, it's so big in scope and whatnot, but you'll, you know, you'll get these little stories and I'll always remember. Uh, sometimes if you've watched my other videos, I talk about the guns of Tarakan. And when I do that, it's because down here in Borneo um, at Tarakan, there are coastal guns here, and it seems to me whenever I play the AI, these coastal guns take out 
transport after transport after transport. Now, it didn't happen this time because he came and bombarded it first, and uh, we just didn't seem to have quite the firepower we usually do. But I always talk about the guns of Tarek, and now I'll always talk about the seagulls of Kagayan. Uh, <laughs> that should be a, a movie title, The Seagulls of Kagayan. Either that or uh, maybe like an 80s pop band. Uh, could be that too. Flock of, flock of seagulls for all you fans out there. Uh, what do we got going on around the map? Well, we've got quite a bit going on. Uh, we've got those refits going on at Pearl Harbor, which is kind of b of a big deal. Uh, what do we have coming in at Aiden? I should probably look at this more often. Uh, we've got the 8th medium. So this is artillery that we've got on AP going into Karachi. Uh, it's this, 8th Medium Regiment Artillery, uh, that's on the transports. Over at Abaddon, of course, we're picking up fuel, we're taking fuel to Karachi, no surprise there. As we go down into uh, the Indian subcontinent, or continent really, uh, well, it's considered a subcontinent. Nobody yell at me in the comments. I don't really care. It's just a big landmass. Um, we still have the Australians here, but now, as you remember, we've got that force. Is it still up here? I think it's still packing. Yeah, the 20th Indian Division. I thought I moved it down here. Uh, maybe I did and then changed it back for some reason, but that's going to come to Madras. When it gets here, those uh, Australians are going to head up to Karachi, get on transports and head to Cape Town and then into Australia, right? Uh, Calcutta, you know, we got to have this built up as can be because it's a very popular landing spot for Japanese players out in this area. 587 there, uh, Madras, Calcutta, Colombo. What's happening at Colombo? Oh, the old usual. I do have some transports and whatnot here. I'm just going to take them and put them in Cape Town. Uh, now, looks like I've got them heading towards Aden, actually. Okay, so they're going to go back to Aden. That's fine. Got to look out for that sub. I probably need to change the uh, how it comes out of here to go like that. Let's just do that very quickly. Waypoint. Set a waypoint. Let's change waypoint one. Let's go down, I don't know, here first. So we're nowhere near that sub when we come out of here. Why does he want to go that way? Uh-oh. Whenever the game does something like that, you can be pretty sure it's because there's danger. Uh, it's just going to automatically... Oh, I see. I think I had waypoint one all the way out here. Let's try this again. Waypoint one there. Okay, and then waypoint two, let's say over here, and then it can get going to Aiden. Is it going to do it for me? No. It doesn't want to go beyond that point. Like I said, anytime the, your routing starts to get screwy, it could be because there's danger in the area. Let's try this again. Set waypoint two. Let's just set it over here. It'll move around to do, or it should. Huh. I don't know. I'm going to have to come back and mess around with that a little bit. Clear all waypoints. Maybe that's why I had it this way. Let's just do waypoint one like that. See what we get. That's better. Okay. Yep. That's how, that's fine. We'll have it come straight out like that. Then it'll go up to Aiden. I'm not sure why it's not drawing the other part of that. We still have uh, torpedo bombers here, fighter, fighter bombers. I usually like to have the fighter bombers at Madras because it gets bombed a whole hell of a lot less and have the fighters, then Colombo, and then have the fighters over at Colombo. Uh, we've got some stuff coming in and out of Mombasa. Mombasa, always check on it. It starts to build up some fuel and supply. Look at that, 43,000 in supply, and there's no reason for it just to sit here. Try to get it somewhere. Down at Cape Town, what do we have? We've got transports. Yep, we got this big Australian group, and this is where the Dickman is. Now, later in videos, withdraw ship overdue. This is costing us 20 points a day uh, as far as political points go, not victory points, political points. I didn't get this withdrawn. Now, the problem is he's got all he's got these troops on him, right? So what we're going to have to do is separate out the Dickman unload it but see i didn't do that uh and i can tell you because we're a little ahead in the game and this and i keep taking these penalties as the dickman is heading 
for Australia. I just didn't catch that, and I'm really mad about it because it ends up costing us quite a bit of political points. Do not do that. Always go check what needs to be withdrawn. You may say, well, how do you withdraw something? So if I took this out of this task force, I unloaded the troops here at Cape Town, then I would have the ability up here to withdraw, right? And so right now we don't. Right now we don't. And uh, it, later on, I kind of screwed that up. So when it gets into Australia, we're going to have to pull that off the map. It's going to cost us a lot of points, though. Uh, here at Cape Town, we got the formidable, the Newcastle, the Von Heemskirk, and the ISIS just sitting here. There's nothing for them to do. I mean, to send the formidable out here just to get slaughtered seems to make zero or little sense. Uh, where's the big action? Well, it's all going to come right here. He's now jumped from across the river here at Mole Mine, and he's coming straight for Pagu. So the big battles are going to be happening right here at Rangoon soon. That's going to be the center of our action, and we've got to make sure Akyab, uh, Cox's Bazaar, Chittagong are built up. We also you know, have these forces here. I can tell you, he comes north and uh, Tangu, Mandalay, Lashio, you know, these places need to be built up. Could we help from China? Potentially, potentially. We don't want to start getting the Chinese in trouble in this area, though, because he can always push this way, and now all of a sudden he's not too far out of Chongqing here. Now, this is really difficult terrain, very mountainous. It's coming out of the Himalayas, right? And so, you know, it's, it's very defensible, especially across this river into Paoshan. Uh, be careful. I mean, the tendency is you want to send the Chinese over here, but that can cause you other problems. So we will be taking a really close look at Rangoon in these upcoming turns. There's going to be a lot of action there. In Sumatra, we're trying to get down here to Sebolga, eventually probably Padang. He's chasing us, and uh, we'll continue to do so. We have not lost Palembang yet, uh, but Palembang, I did not play Fortress Palembang. It is notoriously hard to take anyway. It's in a swamp. It's protected by rivers and the ocean. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how many losses we can dish out to him. He's got all kinds of activity here because, of course, he does. He's landed here at Morocco, so he's just off of Batavia. He's already taken Surabaja. Uh, I've been told that is actually called Surabaja. So somebody told me wrong a long time ago. So if you're from Surubaha or Surubaja, do not be mad at me. I, I, I have never been there, and I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, but I listened to a historical video, like real-life historical video, uh, the other day, and they, were, they kept saying Surabaja. And so I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe one of you has been there and you can tell me. Maybe you're a local. Uh, we've got a decent-sized force here, 901. It's not going to be enough to completely hold them. I can tell you some people like to play Fortress Banduang because it's up here on this mountaintop, and it's you know hard to take uphill here. I did not do that this time. I've only got a 71 garrison there. Just something for him to have to spend some time taking. We've got a decent force to, to Jillajap. I say decent. I mean, it's 173 assault strength. That's not going to strike fear in the hearts of uh, Lodric, certainly. But uh, we've got something there. We've already talked about the seagulls, and but Kangayan will almost certainly fall soon. But I'm going to keep trying to pick off ships as long as I can. Those guys aren't very good pilots. I mean, they they deserve to be rewarded for what they've done. But uh, I'm a hard-hearted man. Din Passer, uh, you know, down here to Koapang. Uh, we're holding on, you know, he hasn't really come to attack those, although he has, he's out here on Flores Island, he's taken some Lockie, Babar, Dobo, Taberfane, so he's taken all of this, it's only a matter of time before he gets to Timor and East Timor, uh, West Timor and East Timor, uh, it's only a matter of time before he gets there, including Dilly, I just like to say Dilly, Rhodey, Koapang, all of these places, you know, down here. He'll take all of these eventually, and then the big standoff will be at Darwin. Speaking of standoffs, uh, we're going to get around to one as we go down Australia here. We've got all kinds of shipping that's trying to come into Perth, you know, just to give you a representative example. Bunch of AKs there. We've got to get destroyers out to them. I've got so much coming in. I'm shuttling destroyers. You know, they take them into port. Uh, I disengage and put them in a di their own task force and come right back out and grab the next one. And we just go back 
looking around and here and there. Two AKs there. I think we, mer nope, three AKs there. We've got a destroyer in this group. That's actually heading back. So as it gets out here, I'll detach that destroyer into its own task force, and I'll probably put it with this guy. Um, same with the destroyer in this group. We've got these t this tanker coming in with the destroyer into Albany. We've got the AM con cans out here doing uh, ASW. I've got destroyers doing de an AM, another AM. What is this? Two AKLs, and then here is another AM. So I've got a lot of anti-sub in and around Perth. Is it enough? Well, I don't know. I've got this group of four AKLs, one-point ships, along with the destroyer on its way to Darwin. Okay, then I've got a bunch of ships kind of a little bit south down here by the Southern Ocean. You can see why this transport, 182nd Infantry, 132nd Infantry, I, these are Americans. Yes, they are. And I took them all the way around to Cape Town and they're about to make it. 182nd, 132nd and the 754th tank as we continue to start. Stuff Australia full, you may as well, right? Because ultimately, yes, are they going to be forces that you use to push north towards the Japanese home islands? They are, uh, but you may as well stage them out of Australia as anywhere else. I mean, you know, uh, rather than have them on an island where maybe they have supply problems or you got to get a transport that's hard to get there or something like that. Um, we may as well, you know, have them in Australia. And plus that defends Australia. That probably goes without saying. Uh, so that, that's that task force. Then I think this was a tanker task force. It is a big tanker task force. Well, pretty big. 22,000 tons of fuel. We need all the fuel into Australia we can get. This is going back. These are more tankers here going back to refuel at Cape Town. Okay. And then we come around here. Uh, yep, I've got a tanker, a big, big tanker group, 56,000 tons up here in Australia. That came all the way from Los Angeles down around New Zealand here. I've got this uh, transport task force coming in. Just going to put them at Dunedin to kind of hide them a little bit. That includes two destroyers there. I've got uh, the, this is uh, air transport. We've got the 35th PG here. What is this? Air Cobras. 25 Air Cobras coming in. Uh, 25 Air Cobras coming in. Eight Aracobras coming in. So all together, 58 Aracobras making their way to Melbourne. Um, again, you know, I mean, he's going to be coming after Australia. Here's another troop transport. This has got coastal AA in it. Uh, so more anti-aircraft for that. I said we'd talk more about New Zealand, and we will eventually, just not right now. Um, CS, CS, CL, 2DD. So he's got destroyers out here. I think he's just kind of snooping around a little bit. I do have, you know, a lot of submarine activity here, here. Now some of these are coming back to replenish now. Back to Sydney. This got hurt. This was the Grayling. It got hit. It's at a 93 float damage. We'll see if it can actually get back to Townsville. It's trying, right? But we'll see. Sub there, sub there, sub there. I mean, you know, the sub task forces. So many times it's more than one sub. And there are his carriers. Now, we don't know what kind of damage that our two bomb hits did. There's no way for us to know that. It didn't say it was on fire. It didn't say heavy damage. It just said two hits. So I don't know. The one said it got below decks and, uh, you know, maybe there was a secondary explosion. That's the kind of thing that can take a carrier down, even through, uh, you know, this kind of bomb hit. We'll see. It'd be kind of a big deal if it did. Um, no, Maya, that's where these Mitchells came out of, I believe. Yeah, Banshees, right? Uh, I was wrong. It was Banshees that came out of here. Now, you can see they took an absolute beating last time. They have now lost 10 of this squadron to air-to-air -air and one ops. You can see the pilots, but that 14% bombing accuracy will certainly take that. And we have 10 just in maintenance, one damage. So, you know, we're going to get, uh, we'll have 13 in here, which is, you know, the uh, squadron limit soon. 
and we hit a carrier. I mean, you can't get better than that. If we look at their naval bombing ability, you can see we've got some guys in here not so good because we've had so many pilots hurt. Now, what would I do about this, right, in the normal game? Uh, I say the normal, I mean, we're playing a normal game. I'm just saying if if I was actually setting up here, I would send these guys with the really bad naval bombing. Let's send them back to the reserves, the general reserve, right? So I've got them in the group reserve. Let's send them all back to the general reserve. Let them train up more. Uh, I don't want them training out here. So now we've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six pilots. We could get away with that for right now because we've only got two operational planes. But, oh, one thing we want to do is, okay, we're bringing him in. It's going to be two days to bring that pilot in. Um, is go to request a veteran and do naval bombing search. Okay, we've got some guys that have a good skill set. They're not very experienced, that's no surprise, but uh, you know, okay, we're gonna have to train them up. Let's take this guy and we'll sign him and so on and so forth until you get up to at least 13. But in a group like this, we'd probably want 16 or 17 pilots, uh, but uh, just wanted to show you, you know, kind of how that works. Uh, Komak, Nomaya, you know, we've got more, we'll get more ships up here because now he's got a carrier task force that's kind of limping back a little bit. They've got a hurt ship. Now it hasn't slowed them down. We're not seeing it's all by itself, right? If we look over here, if it would have been really critically hit, uh, we I think we would see it being escorted back. Uh, now it's possible, you know, we hit it out here and this hasn't really moved since then. So it's possible that, you know, next turn we'll see that. Um, but as of right now, we don't see that it's out here floundering at all. What we'll want to do is swarm our submarines to it. And so, you know, during the setup here, swarm, swarm, swarm to the this task force. Try to catch it, because if it's moving slowly or it has a damaged uh, carrier in it and he's trying to protect it, get those submarines out there. Maybe we'll get a lucky shot, right? Uh, what do we have over on Suva? We've got a lot over on Suva. We've got Marauders. Uh, you see two different squadrons of them. We've got Mitchells. We've got Aracobras, more Aracobras, more Aracobras, and even more. All four of these Aracobra squadrons, some of them have been chewed up a little bit. Uh, but okay. Uh, this is that ship, uh, the Mari 91 float damage. I wanted it to go in right here. Um, Let's just put you in right there. Does it? Does that even have a port? We should look. Uh, port capacity one. Yeah, we'll get it there. It can't get uh, fixed there, but we could always send a repair ship over here eventually or do something like that. Uh, this at least saves it because it is 91 float damage. It's not going to get to Suva. Uh, what do we have cooking at uh, Pago? Not that much. Just one little group of... Um, Era Cobras, we need to build that up. I think I put some fighters. Nope, I do not see them out of Canton. Huh. Uh, we've got a lot of things, you know, heading back to Los Angeles out here. We've got another transport group that's got the 108th Infantry, 31st Aviation Battalion, 197th Coastal AA, 108th Infantry more, 134th. I mean, I'm sending a lot of stuff to Australia. That's what, the fourth different transport group that you've seen coming to uh, Australia. This is going up to Nomaya. It's a transport group as well. 34th Combat Engineers, 205th. Uh, this is Artillery. Second U.S. Marine Corps Engineering Group. They're all heading to Nomaya. Uh, as I just, you know, you just keep pumping the stuff in here. Uh, I need to get a little supply into Bora Bora since I have a unit there. Tahiti and, of course, Haiva Oa, my main two kind of meet-up points down here in the South Pacific. All right, I think I'm going to call that an episode. We looked at this. We kind of looked over the map. It's all about the carriers, where they are in this early game. We've got our carriers refitting, so we can't be that aggressive. Uh, not that I will be even when they do refit until we get a little more firepower, but... 
Um, certainly we want to get these refitted with their AA before we, you know, get, you know, ourselves extended in any way with those carriers. So, uh, that is, this last turn was a pretty good one. I mean, we lost, uh, some air to air stuff, but part, a big part of that is when those marauders went out on their own without escort, uh, that's going to happen, but they did eventually get a couple hits on a carrier. So, okay. Uh, strategy gave me dojo till next time. We'll check out the March 19th, March 20th combat resolution when we come back. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I know I did. I'll talk to you next time.